Hi everyone, my name is Jamie and I'm here today to talk to you about the idea of eating more to weigh less. Sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? But before I wanna before I get into this, I wanna put a nice big disclaimer on here. I am not a doctor, I'm not a certified nutritionist. If you are under either one of these guys' care, please listen to them. My advice is for the general population not under doctor's care. So I cannot stress enough, if you are under a doctor's care, listen to your doctor. Ultimately, they are going to know what's best for you and your particular situation. Alright, so that being said, let's just jump right into this. Um, I do want to warn you guys, I was not blessed with a scientific mind. That's my brother. So I'm going to do my best to explain this to you guys in the way that I understand it. Hopefully I don't just confuse you anymore, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email over at myfitnesspal.com. The link will be under this video here. And, you know, shoot me your questions and I will do my best to answer them for you. If I don't know the answer, I'm not going to lie to you and make something up. I'll be upfront and honest with you. So, but I would like to try to help you if I can, if I end up confusing you. So, that being said, all right, let's, let's do this. Um, now, eating more to weigh less is pretty much the idea of you need to create healthy habits instead of restriction. You don't want to deny yourself food. You don't want to restrict yourself food you need to eat and nourish your body if you want to be strong and healthy. I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, it's been ingrained in our mind that to weigh less, we need to eat less. But that idea is so outdated and frankly, it's not true. You're just starving yourselves and you're hurting your bodies by not nourishing it. You guys need to eat plain and simple. You need to eat. You can eat chocolate and still lose weight. Ladies, you heard me right. You can eat chocolate and you can still lose weight. I eat it. I eat dark chocolate all the time. It has so many good benefits for you. Why wouldn't I want to eat it? Dark chocolate's awesome. I still eat pizza. I still eat french fries. I still eat hamburgers. I still eat ice cream. But I eat it in moderation. And that's a big key to eating more to weigh less. You can eat more. You can eat more. You can eat all the good stuff. Um, oatmeal and bread and carbs and dairy and sugar. You can eat all that stuff and still lose weight. Now the science behind it is where a lot of people get confused. And I'm going to do my best to talk you through this. Um, Eating more to weigh less revolves around two numbers. Those are your BMR and your TDEE. You got to know what those numbers are. And if you figure out what these numbers are, you're going to lose weight. Now, first number is your BMR. This is your basal metabolic rate. This is the minimum amount of calories that your body needs just to maintain its lean muscle mass. Bare minimum. All right, you always, 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 always want to eat above your BMR. The other number that comes into play is called your TDEE. This is your total daily energy expenditure. Probably said that wrong, <laughs> but it's your TDEE. And now this is the amount of calories that your body needs to function on a daily basis. For those who have a lot to lose, you're going to want to eat, in general, about 20% under your TDEE. For those who have about 20 pounds or less to lose, you want to eat about 10% under your TDEE. You do not want your deficit to be as big because you're just going to end up eating below your BMR. And you always want to eat above your BMR but below your TDEE. Once you figure out these numbers, it really gets pretty simple. A lot of people want to over overcomplicate things. But figuring out these numbers is probably the hardest part. But I'm going to give you links and websites to where you can easily figure these out. Yay! Okay, so first, your BMR. 
Now you need to go to fat2fitradio.com and figure this number out. You're going to need to know what your body fat percentage is. They also have a calculator for that. Some of you might have a scale that will tell you. Some of you might have one of those handheld monitors. Either way, either method you want to use, just figure out your body fat percentage and then figure out what your BMR is. The link fat2fitradio.com is going to be right under this video. So go there right now and figure it out. My BMR is 1470. It's 1470 calories. I do not want to eat under that. Now to figure out what your TD, TDEE is, you want to go to this website. Again, I'm linking it underneath the video. It's a calculator that will figure this out for you. So there you go. There's your two numbers. Now a lot of big debate is whether or not you want to eat back your exercise calories. There are so many different opinions on this and usually the people who have the opinions are very passionate about it. But I'm going to tell you what's worked best for me. I, When I figured out my BMR, it's going to give you the option of your activity level. Whether you're sedentary, you're lightly active, moderately active, pretty much depending on your workouts and your jobs and stuff. Um, I eat back my workout calories, so I input my activity level as sedentary. So that would be what my BMR would be without working out. So I have that in there. I figured out my TDEE, which is 1764 at sedentary, and I eat 10% below that, which puts me around 1500 calories a day, in addition to the calories that I burn while working out. Now to figure this out, I have an HRM, it is a heart rate monitor. It's a little strap that you put on under your chest and you have a watch and when you work out you start it up and it detects your heart rate and based on the, the formula the scientific formula for figuring it out it tells you how many calories that you burned so for me this works because then I just add the 1500 plus whatever I burned and that's what I eat usually resulting between 2000 and 2200 calories a day not 1000 calories not 500, 600, 700, 800 calories. All right, I'm eating about 2,000 to 2,200 calories a day. And it's pretty nice. I'll tell you what, I'm happy about it. <laughs> and I want you guys to be happy about it too because you can still lose weight while eating that many calories. Um, you can also go the method of not eating back your workout calories. But I only want you to do this if you factor in your activity level with the BMR calculator. When you go on this website, it'll show you all the different calories versus that corresponds with its activity level. For for me, like I chose moderately active because I work out about five times a week. For me, those calories it figured out would be 2,278 calories. So as you can see whether I use the formula of eating back my workout calories or factoring in my activity level into the formula and not eating back my workout calories, they're pretty much the same number anyway. So if you don't have a heart rate monitor, I suggest you doing the factoring in your activity level into this calculator and not eating back calories. I know it probably sounds really confusing, but trust me, once you get onto that website, fattofitradio.com, all you got to do is punch in a couple numbers and bam, there's the calories that you can eat. So it's really, really, really simple. Trust me. Now, MFP, my fitness pal, has you set up to pretty much everyone ends up eating about 1,200 cal calories a day in addition to whatever calories you burned. A lot of people don't eat those calories back and that's not the way that the website is set up to do. So while the way they have it set up is great for those just starting out and yes you will lose weight, 
after a while, once the weight starts coming off, the 1200 calories isn't going to cut it anymore. And pretty much 1200 calories doesn't really cut it in the first place. A lot of people feel really hungry doing this. So if you're new to the website or if you're new to this information, I highly suggest you going to the fat to fit radiocom figuring out what you should be eating at and in, in changing it in the settings in MFP. Um, fat to fit radio their motto is pretty much eat to be the thinner you. Eat what your goal weight would eat to maintain. And I think that's a really good concept and it works. And guess what? It means that you gotta eat your food. All right, it's not gonna work if you starve yourselves. If you don't listen to me and you still continue to starve yourselves, you're just going to end up hurting yourselves in the long run and you're not going to get the results that you want. When you don't eat, you start to lose muscle. Here, I got a whole list of things that happen when you don't eat. And I want to share this with you here. All right. Now, when you don't eat the right amount of calories, when you're not eating enough, couple major things starts happening to your body here and they're not good. Your hair is going to start to fall out. You're going to be tired all the time. You're going to be cranky. All right, you're going to start getting acne and none of those things are good and it can all be avoided just by nourishing your body. Uh, your thyroid production is going to slow down and your thyroid helps deal with the processing of your fat and your carbs and your protein and your basic uh, metabolic functions you don't want to mess up your metabolism because when you mess up your metabolism what happens is once you're done starving yourselves and you start eating normally again you're gonna weight gain all that weight back and you'll have slowed your metabolism down so much that it's gonna make it even harder to lose weight because your body's gonna be like no I'm not letting go of this food I'm keeping it all I'm keeping it all and it's gonna make things really hard so Yes, granted, eating more is going to make it take longer to lose weight, but on this journey, slow and steady really does win the race. You do it slow, you eat, and the weight you lose, it's going to stay off. Because what you're doing is you're doing a lifestyle change. You're not doing a fad diet. You're not cutting out all your carbs. You're not cutting out all your fat or all your sugar. Or you're not saying, no, I can't have that cookie. No, I will never eat a piece of pizza again. You're not saying that to yourselves. You're doing something that you can do for the rest of your life. And that is the key to maintaining healthy weight loss. This is a lifestyle change. It is not a diet. You can eat your chocolate. Yay, you can eat your chocolate. That's my favorite part. I love chocolate. And you can eat it. So... There, there's there's that okay now another bad thing that happens when you don't eat is you start to lose your muscle mass for overweight people this does take an extended amount of time which is where a lot of people want to point out oh you know starvation mode oh you lose your muscle no you don't yes you do no you don't yes you do but the fact is that you will eventually start losing muscle if you're bigger, it's going to take longer for this to happen. But while you're trying to lose weight, while you're trying to lose the fat, you're, you're going to lose muscle bit by bit by bit. If you're already really, really thin and you have this high calorie deficit and you're not eating enough, it's going to happen a lot faster for you. You're going to start, instead of getting strong and toned and tightening up, you're going to start getting flabby and out of shape and that's not good and it's going to happen a lot faster for you if you're already thin so I want you guys to keep that in mind you want muscles okay you want to be strong um, not eating also lowers your testosterone level now ladies you're probably like well what do I care about testosterone for I'm a female but guess what you've got testosterone yes you're a girl and yes you have testosterone what this does it, it helps you maintain your muscle. You don't eat, you lose the testosterone, and keeping muscle on your body gets harder and harder. That's not good. It's not good especially for you men. You men need to eat too, okay? Eat. 
luckily, I mean, not luckily for me, but luckily for them, they get to eat a lot more. So this is even better news for them. They get to eat a lot because they got a lot of muscle. The more muscle, that's another, that's another good point. The more muscle you have in your body, the more in general that you can eat because muscle burns more calories than fat does. So that's another good reason why you want to keep that muscle on your body and you want to eat. All right. So another thing that I just found out actually yesterday before I did this video, a hugely, huge, hugely important reason why you do not want to starve yourselves. And this, this is what drove me to look this up is because I hear a lot of people give the advice, well, if you're not hungry, don't eat. Your body knows. Your body knows when it's hungry or not. But let's get real with ourselves. If your body knew, then you probably wouldn't be here watching this video, right? If you could trust what your body said, you wouldn't be overweight. And that's where not eating enough comes into play. You don't eat enough, you decrease the leptin levels in your body. Leptin happens to be the hunger hormone. It's what tells you. Hold on a second. Hey, baby. Okay, go play. Go play. That's that's my three girls right there. You want to say hi? Come say hi. Come say hi. Hi. All right. Go play. Go play. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Right. So that's that's my three year old. But like I was saying. Leptin is your hunger hormone. Leptin is what tells you when you're hungry and when you're not. Now, what happens in when you don't eat, your leptin lower, le your leptin levels get lowered down. So therefore, you don't feel hungry because you don't have enough of that that hormone in you to tell you you are hungry. So saying, oh, I'm only going to eat when I'm hungry when I'm barely eating anything at all in the first place doesn't work. It's not a logical statement to make because the reason why you don't feel hungry is because your leptin levels have lowered down so much. Once you start eating and once you start nourishing your body, your leptin levels are going to raise back up and then you can start relying more on that. But you got to make sure you're fueling it enough in the first place in order for this to work. So that was a very interesting piece of information that I found out. Now, let's see. Now, another point I wanted to address was for people who get stuck, who plateau, and they decide, okay, well, that must mean that I have to decrease my calories to break th through this plateau, which I can understand would be a logical thing to think. I've thought it too. I am, I have done it, and it worked for a minute, but then I got stuck again. And I'm like, man, you know, I thought this was going to work, but the truth is it doesn't work usually if you start getting stuck in your weight it's because your calorie deficit does not need to be as much because you've lost weight therefore your metabolism doesn't need it as many calories so you need to not eat less you need to eat more you need to shorten that calorie deficit you need to eat more and then you will break through that plateau I know it sounds crazy, but I did it and it worked. I started eating more and I started losing again. It's pretty awesome. So don't forget that. When you get stuck, try eating more and see if that works for you. Let's see here. What else? Oh, another theme that I wanted to talk about, which is pretty important, is your macros. Your macros are like the amount of fat, the amount of protein, carbs, sugar, sodium that you should be eating that corresponds with your calories. Now my fitness pal is really great because once you put in your calorie goal, it's going to factor all these macros for you. So all you got to do is when you log in is and log in your food to just make sure your numbers ain't in right on the macros and you're going to be golden. It makes it really simple for you guys. Carbs are not the enemy. Fat is not the enemy. You guys don't want to just cut these out. I'm telling you. And this is going to help you make sure when you're eating more that you're not eating more junk. Because if you're eating a lot of bad food, then you're, it's going to tell you, hey, you've eaten way too much fat. Hey, your carbs are way over, like dangerously over. 
So that's a really good thing to do to keep track of to know if you're eating healthy or not. If you're, if you're nourishing your body right, then your macros are going to be in check. So that's something that you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, when I started MFP, I'm pretty sure they had me set at like 50, 55% carbs. 55% of my total calories were from carbs, and I lost weight. 55% were from carbs, and I lost weight. I recently adjusted them just to 45%, just to try to, you know, kick things up a notch here. Without decreasing my calories, I just lessened my carbs just a little bit. And it worked for me, so I now eat at 45% of my calories come from carbs. And the rest is from, like, sugar and protein. And fat, not too much sugar, but fat and protein, which leads me. I want to talk about is fat is not evil. <laughs> okay, you do not need to cut out your fat. Fat does not make you fat. Fat helps you lose fat. Fat is beneficial for you because it helps your body absorb all the nutrients and minerals that you need to be healthy. So check this out. There's two types of really good fats for you. They're called monosaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. And what these fats do is they decrease your blood cholesterol levels, they lessen your risk for heart disease, they help insulin control, they decrease type 2 diabetes, and there's something called omega-3 fatty acids which help maintain your heart and your hair and your nails. So guess what? Chocolate has healthy fat in it. So that's just another great reason to eat it. Cho while we're on the subject of chocolate, chocolate also has dark, dark chocolate, also has antioxidants for you, and a little chemical called oxytocin, which is that chemical that gets released after you orgasm. Ladies, don't you want to release that same chemical by eating chocolate? Makes you feel good, so you don't want to pass that up. So eat your healthy fats. Other good sources are avocados, almonds, peanuts, all of these good foods you can eat, even though they have fat. And on top of that, they are also filling. So you can eat a small amount of them and be filled up. And they give you energy, which is really awesome. Speaking of foods that fill you up, I know a lot of problems when trying to, to eat is that you fill up on all these empty calories and then you're like well all my calories just disappeared because you know you fill up on empty calories but you can do this by uh, also I'm still getting all tongue-tied but anyway okay so another good food to fill you up would be carbs Carbs are not the enemy either. Um, oatmeal, whole grains, all those good carbs are really good for you. You don't want to deny those. Those will fill you up. Uh, protein is another big one. You can get protein from you know your lean meats like chicken and turkey and uh, lean ground sirloin that has a lot of protein in it. Tuna, um, all your yummy meats. You can use protein powder. Uh, Greek yogurt is another good one. All these foods are healthy for you. You can eat a lot of them, and they're going to fill you up and keep you satisfied throughout the day. Um, I think another good way to control hunger is to make sure you never allow yourself to get hungry. I like to eat throughout the day. Um, I like have like three main meals, and then I'll have like snacks in between. And every time I feel a little bit hungry, I eat, and that way I don't end up overeating. Because eating more to weigh less works but in the same aspect you don't want to eat too much either and overeat so you got to find that healthy balance and that's what this is about balance and moderation so there's there's no reason to starve yourselves anymore there's absolutely no reason to do it it does not help it doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds or 100 pounds starving yourself is not going to help if you want your body to burn calories and be a fire, you have got to fuel that fire. You have got to feed it. You have got to nourish it. I cannot stress this enough. You know, and you know, I'm sure you guys have heard about 
you know, that governor, the mayor that wants to ban um, soft drinks and make it illegal to consume and buy over a certain amount of soft drinks, you know, I think that's really stupid because it's just teaching people to restrict themselves. It's saying, no, you cannot have this. No way. Uh-uh. What? Oh, that's not true. You can have the stuff you want. We need to sh tell people about the message of eating more to weigh less. We need to educate people, not ban them, not restrict them. So please, you guys, if you like what I have to say, please subscribe and share my message to everyone. We need to tell the world that it is okay to eat, that our young teenagers do not need to starve themselves anymore. That, that shouldn't even be an issue with all the knowledge and the science out there to back this up. So please, share my message, you guys. Eat more to weigh less. Eat more to be healthy. Eat more to be happy. Nourish that body with good food. If you go on MyFitnessPal.com, I've got a blog on there with a ton of healthy, yummy recipes, especially for breakfast, because I love eating a big, sweet dessert like breakfast. I've got one on there for like a strawberry cheesecake bowl. It's really good, and I've got muffins on there. I've got breakfast muffins with chocolate in them that are really yummy. So check out that blog for some recipe ideas. Um, go to SkinnyTaste.com. is another great website for breakfast ideas, for healthy food ideas. But eating a big, big breakfast really does help too. And yes, you can eat a big breakfast. It's not going to destroy your day or whatever. Eat a big breakfast. Be healthy, be happy. Um, before I go, I want to tell you guys a little bit about my next topic. Next time I'm here, I'm going to be talking about HIT, which is high intensity interval training. And I am going to be doing a HIT workout with you guys. I'm going to get sweaty, and I'm not afraid to do it. And I don't want you guys to be afraid to get sweaty either. Next time you guys hit play on my video, I want you to be in your workout gear. I want your workout shoes on. I want your hair tied back. And I want you to be prepared to sweat it out with me because that's what we're going to do. All right, you guys. So, again, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up on MyFitnessPal.com. I will be more than happy to support you and help you and help clarify anything I might have confused you on. Because I might have done that. I'm really sorry if I did. But thanks again for coming and watching me today. I hope you guys have a really, really, really great day. Take care. Bye.